Joining us now is James Carafano. He's a vice president for foreign and defense policy studies at the Heritage Foundation. Joins us right now, and there's so much in the news, James Carafano. Let's start with Syria. I mean, here we are. We're throwing our money to these rebels. I don't even know if we know who they are. I don't know if the president has made the case that we know who these rebels are. And meanwhile, uh, this is really sort of setting up a, a mini Cold War with the Russians, and the president is meeting Vladimir Putin today. Uh, how uncomfortable and awkward is that going to be, James uh, Carafano? Pretty much. Look, I'm, I'm with you on the second point, is that this, is, this has become a proxy war, and it's not necessarily what you think is a proxy war of the United States against Russia as much as it is a proxy war of Sunni against Shia, which are the two major um, Islamic groups. On the one side, you have uh, Syria, Hezbollah, and Iran, which are Shia, and on the other hand, you have uh, Sunnis, which are being supported by the Turks, uh, the Gulf Coast states, Saudi Arabia, by public and private money. I, I don't buy the argument that we don't know who we're supporting anymore. I mean, look, these guys have been at war for a long time. Uh, it's very clear who the, the sides are. You've got, uh, uh, you've got an alliance of Hezbollah, Syrian militia, and probably some Iranians actually in the country fighting, if you really want to believe that. On one side, you have an, an Islamic fundamentalist uh, rebellion, which is fueled by al-Qaeda and funded by a number of folks in the Middle East. Uh, then you have a group which I, I guess we would actually call freedom fighters or people that don't want the Islamists to take over. Then you've got the Kurds who are you know, trying not to fight with anybody, and you've got four Christians hiding in a cellar somewhere. Oh, well, you, well, you make it seem really cut and dry there, James Garifano. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, here's my bigger question. I mean, I think it's been, it's been well documented that some of these rebels that we're going to be funding now uh, have pledged allegiance to al-Qaeda. Some of them are, are affiliated with Muslim Brotherhood. And meanwhile, over in Turkey... Uh, a secular government, or trying desperately to retain, uh, remain a secular government, at least the people want it to be, they're protesting on the streets. They're trying to push back against Erdogan and his push to make uh, the Turkish government more Islamist. And I haven't seen this president or this State Department say anything vital about that hot spot. Well, that is actually the, the really key observation about U.S. policy, which is, you know, there's the old joke about the drunk looking for his keys and the cop goes... What, where, where are you looking? He goes, well, I'm looking under the light post. He goes, well, why? Your car's parked down the street. He goes, well, the light's better here. As people tend to want to focus on the problem as a tend to, instead of focusing on the things you can actually impact. So the United States actually had a tremendous amount of influ influence in countries like, or could have, in Iraq and um, Jordan and Israel and Turkey, countries that border that. We've been very much kind of absent and lackadaisical about the whole thing. And, the, and you know, Turkey's in a, uh, in a, in a really interesting predicament. That people said Erdogan couldn't last. Um, you know, we, we at least thought he'd get voted out of office before his movement collapsed. Can I ask just one quick question? I think the question every American asking, is asking is, how is this in America's national security interest? I mean, most people don't even know where Syria is on the map. So uh, just... Can you can you describe for Americans why this is important, why they should care? Yeah, I think we should care, I, and and this is the distinction between interest and vital interest. The vital interest is something that if you don't take care of this, this danger is going to come to your doorstep. I don't think that's the case mm -hmm. in Syria. On the other hand, I do think that the that the challenge in Syria is a broader destabilization of the region, uh, a, either a, a potentially either a big win for Iran or for al-Qaeda, neither of which is good for the United States. Um, we don't get a lot of oil from that part of the world, but other people do, and oil is a fungible global commodity. So if a lot of oil goes offline anywhere, it affects everybody everywhere. Plus, people forget the Middle East is really a, a, an enormous transit point for much of the world's uh, trade. So we're losing in the Middle East. Things are not going our way. This region is destabilizing very, very quickly. We have an interest in trying to... to to create a um, uh, you know, fire break against that. Um, does that mean we should be deeply involved in the Syrian war? I don't think so, because that's a mess. You know, remember Iraq back in 2006? This is Iraq in a very small place. So what is the, what is the outcome that we want here? I and mean, what, what is the best outcome for America's security? Yeah, interests? that's a great question. This is one of the, the you kind of, uh, diplomacy 101, when people want to go, well, what's the best outcome? Well, you know what? It doesn't matter, because there is no good outcome. <laughs> now, this is 
not going to end well. Right. Yeah. What, what we can do. I think is, that's what concerns of a lot of Americans. Yeah. Is, yeah. What, we can, what we can do is be, best protect our interests, and which is make sure that neither Al Qaeda nor Russia right. or Iran walk away with a win, and that our allies, the, the countries that we should be working with in the, the, the region, remain strong. And I listed those. The problem is the administration has done a terrible job. We've walked away from Iraq. We could have had a big win there. Um, we've been we've been absent uh, really in dealing with Turkey. That's melting down. Jordan is probably a, a very important, small, but very strategic country. They're looking at a tsunami that's going to overwhelm them, and we've been a terrible ally for Israel. Our guest is James Carafano. He's the vice president for foreign and defense policy studies over at the Heritage Foundation. And, well, we're told that we've got a new president in Iran. Well, I mean, he is our new president, uh, the new president of Iran. The, uh, we're being told he's moderate. He's a cleric. His name is Hassan Rouhani. Uh, moderate, of course, is sort of in the eye of the beholder, and it's a relative issue here. Uh, I, I also see that Hezbollah has welcomed him as the new beacon of hope. So how moderate can he be Ooh. if Hezbollah loves him? Well, look... Um it doesn't matter. The Ayatollah and a lot of very hardline people run that country and will continue to do so. I saw this Twitter thing. Well, now we can negotiate about the nuclear program. I mean, really? Seriously? Honestly? <laughs> Look, keep the sanctions on, pile on more sanctions, you know, and uh, put these guys in a very small block. And, and if this guy is a moderate, what this will help is lead the fuel towards an internal revolution, and maybe we'll have a recurrence of the Green Revolution. Maybe we'll throw these guys out. But look, don't 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 think that you're going to negotiate your way out of this. It's just idiotic. All right, and finally, really fast, uh, James Carafano, the president is over in Ireland for the G8 summit. I mean, how, how important are these summits at this point? And, yeah, are we looking for anything out of this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there Bring you go. Flyer miles. <laughs> there you go. There's the there's the answer. That's why we love James Carafano. He cuts to the chase. All right, James, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good to be with you. James Carafano, again, Vice President for Foreign and Defense Policy Studies at the Heritage Foundation. He's also the director of the Catherine Shelby Cullum Davis Institute for International Studies at the Heritage Foundation.